Hey Tubies, it's Psychic Bob. Well, here I am. I'm just trying to get my hair in line today. It's another scorcher here in Virginia on the east coast of the U.S. And uh, I'm staying inside today. I was going to go outside and do an outdoor video today. It's just too hot. And I don't want to go down to the beach because here we're living in a town where it's like a tourist town. So like literally... There are thousands of people right now gathering on the beach and I can't do a video. It's too distracting. You know how like I like to walk on the shore with you guys and talk about spiritual stuff. Well, there's nowhere to walk because literally it's corner to corner blankets, beach blankets and coolers and people running and screaming. So we'll go to the, the beach after the holiday when everybody leaves town. So, but I want to come here today and just say hello to you guys. As you may recall, last Wednesday, for Wiccan Wednesday, we talked about the magic of the 4th of July and how you can incorporate the pentagram into your life. Well, you know, while I was down here, I went to one of the little local stores and I found some more magical pentagram stuff and I had to show it to you here. Hold on, let me show this to you. Check this out. I got this really beautiful cloth. Hold on, let me get it back here. It's like a bandana. But it's done in red, white, and blue. It's part of their 4th of July stuff. But if you notice, it's got stars all over it. Red and white stars and red and white stripes. I think this is very magical. It's a, you know, pentagrams, uh, you know, which is a symbol of the Wicca. It's a magical symbol. So, you know, while you're out today, it's 4th of July. By the way, happy 4th of July. You might want to look at your local, you know, little stores, drug stores, or department stores, or beach shops. And see if you can find some magical star items. You know, I just, I love it. And I got a few other really cool things I got to show you today. Today I'm wearing my witchcraft t-shirt. As you guys can see it here. It says witchcraft. Oops, I don't know if you can see it. But this is a magic guy, witch guys gathering herbs. Hopefully you can see that. Anyways, I'm wearing that. But I'm also wearing a new piece of jewelry here. And I wanted to show you my new jewelry. This is made in sterling silver. Let me just back up here. You can see it. It's a vertical bar pendant done in silver. I've got it hanging on my chain here. And what's really cool, if you look at it, it's the phases of the moon. Can you guys see that? It's kind of hard. We've got some glare here. But it's got the full moon, and then it goes down to the dark moon. And uh, let's see if I can get a better angle on it for you. Here's another shot of my pendants. It may be a little hard to capture on film here, but basically it's a vertical bar pendant. It's worn like up and down like that. But I wanted to show you here because it goes through the phases of the moon from the crescent into full moon and then into dark moon. And I just think it's cool. It's a silver moon bar pendant. So I'm wearing this little pendant today to honor the magic of the moon and you know while I've been down here at the beach it's been so nice because I've been able to go out and see the moon at night and every night I've been offering the ritual the sacred libation as many of you know I'm the keeper of the sacred chalice for the order of the purple cord and uh, you know if you don't know about the order of the purple cord you might want to visit um, my website robert heckmancom link will be below and, uh, you know, read about the order. We're a mystical Wiccan order, and we'd love for you to consider joining us. Membership's free, and over my website explains what, you know, more about the order and how to join. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Today for Wiccan Wednesday, I thought we would talk about uh, another form of scrying. Let me show you what we got set up here. I made a little mini scrying shrine, a little altar to work with here, a little working altar. And... As you know, I put on my magical pentagram cloth here. And uh, what we're going to use today, we're going to talk about scrying with a fishing float. Now, as many of you know, down here I'm in a little beachside town. And, you know, um, people down here, I've actually seen some people who are sea witches and they practice sea magic. And, and, and it's old time tradition, you know, for the old witches in the seaside towns. They didn't have a lot of money. You have to remember a lot of sea witches were poor and just lived on the edge of society. And they couldn't afford fancy things like crystal balls. And uh, But what was very common back in the day in seaside towns were these little glass balls called fishing floats. 
To help clarify this type of scrying, let me give you a little history on fishing floats. Here I've put out some of my collection of fishing floats. I've been buying these while I've been down here because as I told you where my mom lives, it's a little seaside town and you'll find these in many little seaside towns. This is a big sea town, a fishing town tradition. These are called glass floats. Now they don't really use these anymore on fishing nets but what they used to do is they would have glass balls and they would wrap them in netting and then tie them onto their their fishing nets and this way when they, they would fish it would keep the nets from sinking to the bottom of the sea they would float in the water and catch fish and they could also keep an eye on where their nets were because these balls would they could see them floating in the water and they come in all sizes this is a large one and they go down to small ones and so when you find fishing floats a lot of times you'll find them wrapped up in this sort of netting because that represents the old seaside fishing uh, nets. Now, whoop, I wanted to drop this here. Now what I've done here is I actually have taken the netting off one of these floats. In the old seaside towns, what the traditional sea witches would do is, you know, as I said, they couldn't afford fancy crystal balls, but in every seaside town, it was easy to get these glass fishing floats. And you'll see most of them have a seal on the end where the glass is sealed off. Some of them, the, the seal is broken off and it's just an open hole, but they're like hollow balls, but they're traditionally made of beautiful either dark blue or dark green glass. And I'm really drawn to this beautiful deep cobalt blue. And you know, in the, the old days in the witching towns uh, or in the, the seaside towns, the witches, the sea witches, you know, um, some of them were still, you know, under persecution. So they could have in their home a fishing float and nobody would think anything. They'd think, oh, well, everybody has fishing floats. But really, for the sea witches, this became a magical tool. And so if you're looking for a more affordable alternative, uh, you know, for a crystal ball, you might want to explore glass fishing floats. Now I'm going to put this glass float here. I've just, I don't have a stand, so I'm using actually one of my titanium rings. If you have a small enough one, you can use a piece of jewelry just to hold your ball so it doesn't roll. So as I said, if you're, you know, at the beach or a little seaside town, look in the little souvenir shops for these glass floats. And you, most stores will carry them. And if you find them and they're in the netting, you can just cut the netting off. See, as I did, I, this one was actually in the netting like this one, but I cut the netting off. So now I have a wonderful scrying instrument. So I really encourage you to explore glass fishing floats, especially if you're interested in sea magic, because it's a traditional witch, sea witch tool to use glass fishing floats as your crystal for scrying. And uh, there are different ways you can use it. You can literally just hold it in your hand and gaze into it. As you can see, it creates a very deep and mystical field of view. Or you can do like I've done here, is set up a little altar. Now, generally, it's best to, to uh, you know, work in a dim lighting. Now, you can work, today we're working in broad daylight, but last night I turned off all the lights and I just lit candles. And so, you might want to get some little candles. Now, I got these in a beautiful kind of aqua sea green blue, which I think is very sea magical. And, you know, if you, if you want to set up a little scrying altar, you can get just candles. I would encourage you to get them. Oh. And then you can just light, light your candles here. And see at night time when it's dim it creates just a soft light and it really glows. So this is one way you can do scrying. Isn't that wonderful? and it's keeping with sea witch traditions. Now, if you want to work with the, you know, get glass fishing float as a scrying tool, you also probably want to consecrate it or dedicate it to, you know, the gods and the spirit world. Uh, one of the simplest ways to do it is literally get some incense. I don't have incense here today, but pass it through incense and offer it to serve as a portal. 
Uh, you know, you can, if you're near the, the ocean or the river, the water, take it to a natural body of water and submerge it and ask it to be blessed. Uh, and that failing, you can also do like I do, pass it over light so that it will be a vehicle of light to come through and ask that it be granted the spiritual light that you can see. So we can say, great spirit, we offer you now this crystal float, this glass float, that it will be our scrying device. May the light of the spirit infuse it, that it will become our eye to the spiritual world. So mote it be. And then you can simply put it here between your candles and sit and just do a gentle gaze into the ball. The wonderful thing about these old glass floats is they really bend the light and create such a, a deep field. It's like looking into the ocean. And don't be surprised if you start to see things in the ball because last night when I was doing this, I got some really profound mystical visionary experiences. One of the, the things that you might experience while scrying is also you might even hear sounds or voices. The other night I was scrying and I swear what was strange is I thought I saw motion in the ball like water and then I heard the ocean waves. It was literally like I was at the beach so it carried that energy of the sea with it. Now if you can find antique glass floats, which you can, this is actually a modern one, it's not an antique. But the antique ones are really prized. They're very expensive, though, especially in seaside towns because people know the value of them. But you don't have to buy an old one. You can buy a new one. Isn't that just beautiful? Now, as I've said, you can also just hold your fishing float, your glass ball in your hand and just gaze into it. This is actually done best in dimmer light, but you can really actually do it in any light. And as I'm sitting here today, I'm looking into the crystal just with a relaxed gaze. And as I sit here and I gaze into this beautiful ball of deep blue glass, I'm starting again to hear the sound of the ocean. And as I look within, I'm seeing motion within the ball. It's literally like I'm seeing the ocean inside. It's beautiful. This is a wonderful way to commune with your deities. In fact, let's do an invocation. Great goddess of the sea, we call you here today. Come and be with us now. Let us see and hear your message. This is beautiful. I'm seeing a bunch of dolphins now. They're showing me dolphins. And the dolphins are surrounded by an ethereal glow. I feel this is a sign of blessing from the sea. It's the ancient mother is giving us the sign of the dolphins as a sign of joy and companionship. Great goddess, as I look into the vast ocean through this scrying device, help me to connect to the power of your ocean. May your waves today bring blessing to all of us here and all watching this video. May they be blessed by your presence. As you look into your crystal, just relax. Don't force anything. Just let it come as it will. Now I'm seeing a beautiful moon rise. They're showing me a big, bright, full moon. It's silvery, but it's like a super moon. I'm actually seeing it here. And I'm hearing the sound of seagulls, and I hear the ocean. It's funny, sometimes when you're scrying, you may be seeking to get a visual image, but you might get an auditory experience as well. Allow that to happen. But just relax and allow yourself just to go in to the scrying device. I'm being shown a flag. It's interesting. It looks like it's an American flag. But the flag is tattered and worn. And I'm seeing people rise from the sea. These look like uh, two men on each other, like mermen. They're like half fish and half men. And they're, they're lifting the sea. It's like they're trying to repair the flag. I feel this is a sign of a prophecy that America has been damaged. And it's going to require divine intervention to bring healing. 
But the wonderful thing is the sea gods are now connected. And so America will come through a time of trial, and yet the flag shall remain. How mystical. Again, I'm seeing the full moon. This is a reminder that the Great Mother is with us continually and we need not fear. How powerful. And so I got just a little bit of a vision today. and I'm gonna to have to meditate on that. You know, one of the things that you can do, uh, and I really encourage it is, after each session when you do scrying, write down what you saw or heard or experienced because you won't remember it in a week or two and so by having a written record you'll start to see what messages are coming through and uh, don't worry if you know when you first time you do this you sit down right away so well i didn't see anything make it not an exercise to force a vision but just enjoy the experience of gazing if you just relax and enjoy just the beauty of the beautiful glass ball, it will reveal to you its messages. So it may take a little while. Now, as I said, again, you can hold the ball or you can do as I've done here and set up a little table. Uh, one of the things I would recommend if you want to hold your ball is try to get like a, a napkin ring if you can't find a crystal ball holder. Napkin rings are great. Now, I don't have a napkin ring. I just have one of my little titanium rings. But it's just big enough. It holds the ball nicely, as you can see, so it won't roll. So you could even use a piece of jewelry. But, uh, you know, you might want to make a little shrine just like this, just a little cloth and two candles in your ball. And uh, enjoy the experience of sitting each day. I find that consistency is very important. And you want to kind of try to make a time every day where you spend a little time with your, your crystal. And so I wanted to bring this to you because I think that for those of you who are interested in magical practices, and maybe you can't afford a crystal ball, some of the really good crystal balls are up like $100. This is, a, as I said, a traditional form of witchcraft, sea witchcraft, where they use glass floats. And I think this ball cost all about $6, $7. Um, and as you can see, it's just beautiful, deep cobalt. Now, they come in different colors. Um, you know, I myself am just a fan of the deep blue. I think it's great for scrying. But as I showed you earlier here, we also have, you know, green, green ball. And they have these, this is kind of a lighter, and they actually have even darker ones that you can, you can get. But as you can see, that's a beautiful ball. Now, that's a big one, but it, if you want a larger scrying device, this is wonderful you know and uh, what I'm also going to do is hang these in the window uh, these are also known as witch balls for protection because the glass uh, traps evil spirits inside and reflects hostile intention and the netting is also a form of protective knotting as many of you may remember in the Celtic culture you know they have Celtic knots well sea nets and fish nets are kind of the seaside version of, of Celtic knotting now, if you buy the floats uh, that have the netting on it, you can also, as I said, hang them here. So I've hung this one right here at the door. I don't actually recommend you put it at the door. Put it in a window where it won't be disturbed, but this was an easy place to demonstrate it. But when you hang it, you know, the light comes through it and it glows. And I've seen people hang like three or four in a row. And uh, some of them are different sizes or colors or different lengths of netting. And they're just beautiful. And it is, again, an old traditional witchcraft tradition to hang these glass floats uh, as protective devices. So there you go. Well, guys, I have certainly enjoyed coming here today and sharing with you about this wonderful scrying device, the glass fish float, fishing float. And I hope wherever you are, this has been of some help to you. And so I encourage you to explore this. I am so thankful you guys are here. Listen. Keep it here at Spirit Channel. We got more coming tomorrow. It's Thursday, and that means Vlog Thursday. And we might go to the beach tomorrow. We might just do that. See, we'll see how the weather is and how the crowds are. But I've been wanting to get out with you guys and do an outdoor video, so I think we'll do that. I am so glad you're here. I love you. 
I'm sending blessings to each of you. Listen, help me out. Like this video, favorite it, share it with your friends, hit subscribe, be part of our channel here. And oh, by the way, if you didn't see it, last night I got out late messages from the spirit world. So if you haven't seen that, it is out. I got it out late last night around 11 o'clock Eastern time. Um, and that's in the queue right before this video. So check that out and get your messages. You guys are best. I love you. Mm. Thanks for being here. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Vlog Thursday. And until then, may you always blessed be.